Is Pope Francis possessed with devils? I'm going to prove it in this video that yes, he is. Here on the winepressnews.com, there's a story here about Pope Francis says eating meat is a self-destructive trend and says we need to repent for abusing Mother Earth. Not going to read the whole article. You can go here, this website, and check it out for yourself. But here it says, quoting him, it says, Here too I was pleased to note that while previous generations talked a lot and concluded little, you on the other hand have been capable of concrete initiatives. That is why I say that this, more than ever, is the right time. If you do not succeed in turning this self-destructive trend around, it will be difficult for others to do so in the future. Don't let yourselves be seduced by the sirens that produce, propose a life of luxury reserved for a small slice of the world. Instead, have that broad outlook that can take in all the rest of humanity, which is much bigger than our little continent. May you aspire to live to a life of dignity and sobriety without luxury and waste so that everyone in our world can enjoy a dignified existence. Yeah. Um, this from one of the richest men on earth. Let's not talk about that, all the wealth of the Vatican and everything else. There is an urgent need to reduce the consumption not only of fossil fuels, but also of many superfluous things. In certain areas of the world, too, it would be appropriate to consume less meat. This, too, can help save the environment. Um, and it goes on there. Like I said, you can read the article. Consume less meat. Hmm. Abstain from meat. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They're giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It's not the Holy Spirit. Okay? Keep that in mind. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, like a pope, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Extremely important to remember, there's not one thing in the scriptures that says you're not allowed to eat meat on certain days or certain things or any commandment to abstain from meat in the New Testament is not of the Holy Spirit of God okay I eat meat seven days a week <laughs> and a lot of you do too right this commanding to abstain from meat thing it's a doctrine of devils it's a seducing spirit keep that in mind okay here we have this report Rome reports in English this is from the Vatican. This is July 12, 2022. All right, we'll play this a little bit here. Pope Francis met with the participants of the European Youth Conference and encouraged them to transform the old continent into something new. He said they can affect this change by being more attentive and less swayed by ideologies than previous generations. And Less swayed by ideologies, you mean like Catholicism? urge them to be sensitive to environmental issues. Pope Francis praised the concrete commitments young people have made to care for humanity's common home. He explained how urgent it is to reduce consumption not only of fossil fuels, but of many superfluous things, and said that in certain parts of the world, it would be advisable to consume less meat. The okay, so there you go, right there, just to confirm what the uh, uh, Wine Press News has here. Um, but now I want to play this thing here. This guy is a Catholic, sort of a trad cat, I guess. Traditional Catholic, if you don't know what trad cat means. Dr. Taylor Marshall, I want to play something here. It's very interesting. Uh, 325, we'll start about there. And by the way, just to say this, um, thank you to the brother out there that sent the Blue Blocks glasses to me as a gift to the ministry. It, it is. This is only my second day of having them does seem to help pretty good so just a little side note right there um, if you don't know it helps you when you're on the computer a lot it, you don't get the uh, blue light causing you, you to uh, get headaches and things like that so appreciate it let's go to 324 here um, and let's listen to what he says here some interesting things put up the tweet here I said, I'm willing to grant that Pope Francis is infallible on do not eat meat, but only when he says it on a Friday or a day of abstinence 
snark emoji. In this regard, he agrees with every real pope from St. Peter forward. Okay, so he's saying that there's days of abstinence and do not eat meat on you know, Fridays, and that that would agree with St. Peter. Well, if it's agreeing with St. Peter, then please give a chapter and verse. Nothing about abstaining from meat in the scriptures, not at all. And you'll see here, they basically, I mean, he doesn't come right out and say it, but it's from Holy Mother Church. It's not from the Bible. Let's continue. I mean, you know, which is funny. Oh, uh, Paul warns about, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, the scripture I showed earlier, 1 Timothy chapter 4, Paul warns about people saying, commanding to abstain from meats. He warns about it. Peter never says anything in 1 Peter, 2 Peter, wherever. Doesn't say anything about, you know, yeah, watch out, or, or it's okay to abstain from meat, certain things. There's no contradiction there. But somehow, after the Bible's finished, then it comes out that, oh, yeah, we should abstain from meat in certain days. <laughs> I don't think so. Let's continue. What's sad to me is that the tradition of not eating meat or le eating less meat, for example, on an ember day before Vatican II, is enshrined in Catholic, not only tradition, theology. It's not in scripture. You know, let's just, let's come out with a satanic cult, Roman Catholicism, after the Bible's completed and will contradict scripture with what we do, but it's all of God. God had us come out and add all these traditions and everything else, Catholic theology, and it contradicts scripture like crazy, but don't worry, it's fine. Ascetical theology, eating less meat, abstaining from meat, is integral to Catholic identity for 2,000 years. Okay, then you've been possessed with devils for 2,000 years. Commanding to abstain from meats, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, it's a doctrine of devils and seducing spirits. So for 2,000 years, you've been possessed with devils. <laughs> Amazing. It is a great teaching moment for a pope to say that not eating meat is part of our theology, our patrimony, our morality. Wow. It's part of the tradition of Lent, traditionally part of Advent. Tradi None of which are in Scripture. Traditionally part of the vigil days before holy days of obligation. Oh, wait, wait. Vigil days before the day, holy days of obligation. Um, uh, um, oh, it's right there. Yeah, it's not in there. We have a deep and long tradition with regard to not eating meat. Why not connect it with the tradition of Catholicism? Missed opportunity. Swing and a miss. Instead, it's a commercial for Laudato Si, which is Pope Francis's encyclical on saving the planet. And yeah, I want to save the planet. I'm not into littering. I don't let my kids litter. I think factories should be regulated so they're not pouring sludge into rivers, streams, neighborhoods. We need clean air. I'm all for all that. But I'm not so sure don't eat meat is the way forward. Why would the Pope be weighing in on this? If anything, he should be weighing in on... Because the Pope is part of a political movement. And you know that. The uh, temporal sword. Uh, that's what it's all about. All the environmental stuff and everything else. It's all part of a political movement to take away people's rights. That's why the Pope's part of it. That's why he's leading the whole thing. You know, through his Catholic knighthoods and, you know, all the other things like that. There is so much sin in the world, so much sin against human sexuality, human life, human dignity. We need to not only save the planet, we need to save our souls. Oh, you see, we need to save our souls. I thought that's up to the Lord. Huh, yeah, you see. I, he's being nice and honest here. That's good. But you see, this is why a real Bible-believing Christian rejects Roman Catholicism, because these people save themselves. 
We need to save our souls. Oh boy. See, Jesus died on the cross. He's going to talk about that here in a little bit. Jesus' death on the cross is merely sort of an example. It's what just kind of starts things. And you say, all right, well, I'll just kind of have to crucify my flesh and put my flesh down and kind of abstain from this and abstain from that, whatever else. And maybe someday if I die in a state of grace, then I get to go to heaven, maybe, uh, after I go through purgatory and burn for a while. You know, it's weird. And, you know, it's, it's so funny because all these guys, the, the trad cats, they get so rabid about the Protestants, the Protestant Reformation, and yet they're doing the same thing. They're protesting what the Pope is doing, and they're seeking to reform the church. They're the modern-day Protestant reformers. <laughs> kind of funny. Let's continue. We need to do penance. And so I'm calling all Catholics to not eat meat on Fridays as a sign of penance. Now, you may be watching right now, and you may say, now, what's the deal with Catholics not eating meat on Friday? That's kind of a weird deal. You know, St. Paul in uh, Romans said all foods are clean. Christ said all foods are clean in the Gospel of Mark. Um, uh, no, actually, it was Peter that talked about all the foods. Arise, Peter, kill and eat, you know. And he's talking about that. Paul really didn't talk much about that. He said that, you know, a man that's a vegetarian or a man who's weak and eats herbs, it's not to despise him that eats meats and vice versa and whatever. Talking about that in Romans chapter 14. It's actually a man who's, you know, eating meat is not supposed to despise him who's weak and eating herbs. So... But see, if you're a Catholic, you don't really don't need to know the scriptures that much because you don't follow it anyhow. So let's continue. You know, you shouldn't be uh, going by these outward things. It's the heart that matters. So repentance is in the heart. So why would you not eat meat on Friday? Here is the Catholic answer. It comes from St. Thomas Aquinas, but those before him came. Uh, yeah, St. Thomas Aquinas. Not from scripture, just a philosopher in the Catholic Church. In the structure of our week... In discipline, it's called ascetical theology, not aesthetic, that's beauty. Ascetic is striving, training, discipline. So that you can earn heaven. That's what it's about. Putting down your flesh, punishing yourself. That's what this whole thing is about. In ascetical theology, we structure our week so that every Friday is a micro Good Friday and every Sunday is a micro Easter. So Sundays are always a day of rest, of celebration, of recreation, of joy, of family, of worship, of receiving the Blessed Sacrament, the Holy Eucharist. Which doesn't really make sense because Jesus rose from the dead. He didn't uh, do the final, the Last Supper on Sunday. So you're trying to imitate what Christ did. You're doing a pretty poor job of it. Let's continue. Catechesis, learning our faith, learning more about God, acts of mercy, acts of charity. That's all Sunday. Why? Because Christ, our Lord, rose again on a Sunday, the third day. He rose on the third day. On Friday, he offered his flesh, his body and blood, to God the Father, as a propitiation, as the Lamb of God for the sins of the whole world. But it's not enough. It's not enough. You have to, you know, save yourself. You need to save yourself, he said earlier. Isn't that so weird? Let's continue. Friday is a day for Christ. It's a day of no drink. It's a day of dehydration. It's a day of fasting for him. No one came to Christ when he was about to get on the cross and said, hey, would you like something to eat? Uh, okay, what Jesus did that has nothing to do with what we have to do to be saved in terms of, you know, well, he didn't get anything to drink or eat, you know, before he died on the cross, so we should do the same. Huh? See the asceticism thing that he was talking about earlier? The self-flagellation, the whipping, and whatever? Bizarre. It's weird. Christ was fasting in his passion. It was a day of scourging where he was whipped. The flesh of his body was ripped off. He gave up that flesh for you and for me. Sort of, you know, so that you can eat it and drink the blood. 
And then you have to continue to do good works and penance and all the other good stuff, auricular confession and all that. And, you know, maybe you can earn heaven someday. He carried the wood of the cross. He fell down in the dry dust of Jerusalem. He was mocked. They punched him in the face. They said, prophesy, prophesy, who hit you? They spit in his face. Into the flesh of his forehead, they pressed a crown of thorns. Blood came out into his eyes. They laid him on the wood of the cross, stretched him out naked, and nailed iron nails into his hands and his feet, and they lifted him up for the whole world to see in humiliation. Uh, and humiliation, why do you do it then with your crucifixes? You just keep it going, the sacrifice, the perpetual sacrifice of Christ on the cross. It can't end. You know, a bunch of cannibals. We have to eat his flesh and drink his blood. I'll talk more about that here in a little bit too, but let's continue. All on a Friday. So if we're going to party on Sunday, if we're going to receive the Blessed Sacrament, in the holy sacrifice is an obligation on Sunday. If we're going to wear our Sunday best, our best clothes. Hmm. Wear your Sunday best on Sunday. <laughs> and, you know, Baptist churches and other, you know, they don't do things like that. That's, you know, it's, it's in the scriptures somewhere, Sunday best. I, again, I, I can't turn to it right now. Yeah, it doesn't exist. And eat our Sunday best food with a Sunday dinner and a Sunday brunch. And you get your dessert. In America, you know what the prize dessert is? We actually call it the Sunday. You think there's a connection maybe there? No. You get to eat your Sunday on Sunday. If all that's true on Sunday, then why isn't that also true with regard to penance, suffering, fasting, sacrifice on Friday? So we Catholics for 2,000 years have kept celebration and worship and resurrection and recreation on Sunday. And on Friday, we do penance. You eat less. The quality of your food is less. Bitter herbs, vegetables, no meat. Meat is nutrient-rich, satiating. But even more, Jesus offered his flesh. He gave up his flesh on a good Friday. We give up not eating flesh on a Friday as a perpetual sign from generation to generation that Christ died for our sins on a Friday. He died for your sins, but you have to give up other things to perpetually try to save yourself. And Fridays are a day of penance. Do you agree with me? If you agree with me, now is the time for you to give this video a thumbs up. Uh, no, I think, here you go. I'll give it a thumbs down. <laughs> Not like that means anything on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so, Jesus gave up, you know, he sacrificed his flesh on Friday. Therefore, we shouldn't eat flesh on Friday. But you eat flesh on Sunday in the form of the Eucharist. Weird. But let's continue. Let's go up here to uh, 15 minutes and 22 seconds just to get it one more time. Okay, here we go. It's not from Scripture. It's from the Holy Mother Church. Yes, it is Catholicism. It is Christianity to abstain some from meat periodically as defined by Holy Mother the Church. That is sacred, that is holy, that is good. Sacred, holy, and good. Oh, boy. Um, abstain from some meat, he says there. But uh, earlier he said plainly abstain from meat. That's a doctrine of devils. So, uh, yeah. That will be that for that video here. Just wanted to put that out there. If you don't know about Catholicism, if you're newly saved and you don't understand how evil Roman Catholicism is, uh, yeah, stay away from Roman Catholicism. It's a perpetual works system. All right, uh, the Bible teaches, let me show you here, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, 
For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of yourselves. We need to save ourselves, he said. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Say that no works are connected to salvation. Uh, well, after you get saved, then you do good works for rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And good works clean up your life. It's a good thing. How do you know? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Not good works into Jesus. No. Created in Christ Jesus, you get saved unto good works. You start to live for the Lord after you get saved. Please understand the difference here. You don't get saved by good works. The good works come after you get saved when the Holy Spirit moves in and helps you to clean up your life. Sanctification. Please understand that. Right? And the salvation that comes is not the same as eternal salvation. It's just saving your life from you know, being a wreck. If you're a, an alcoholic, you need to be saved from that alcohol in the sense of you need to get away from it. You need to be saved eternally first, and then you need to be saved from a life of alcoholism second, after you get born again. So please understand that. But it says here, created in Christ Jesus on two good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So good works after salvation is fine. But that's not what the Catholics teach. They teach maintaining good works and dying in a state of grace, their actual wording. So I um, just wanted to put that video out real quick here and just kind of set things up for this coming weekend. Um, we're going to be talking about the blood and the water uh, on Saturday night, 10 o'clock p.m., Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m., I'm going to be actually talking about the flesh and the blood, what it really means, something that no Catholic is ever going to understand. Uh, it's a spiritual thing there. Jesus Christ is there. He's talking about eating his flesh, drinking his blood, John chapter 6. Nobody comes up and eats his flesh and drinks his blood, his physical flesh and blood there. And you say, well, yes, but it's symbolically in the Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist and whatever else. He's symbolizing the Eucharist and things. No, he's not. John chapter 6 is not about the Eucharist. It's not about communion or something else like that. It is not. And you'll see what it's about when we actually do the study. Very in-depth study coming Sunday morning. So um, please do tune into that. It's very important um, to see what the Bible actually teaches. And the Catholic Church has covered up for a very long time. Um, they don't want this book in the hands of the people. That's why it's Holy Mother Church gives us these things. And, and the the you know tradition and saint thomas aquinas and asceticism and, and it, what about the scriptures what saith the scriptures oh well you know i'll just let's not worry about that so please tune in to this coming weekend's two studies the water and the blood and the flesh and the blood saturday night sunday morning that is going to be it and we'll see you this coming weekend thank you for watching